Savvy Business Radio, drawing out the best from our guests with our host, Christina Nitschman. Today we have a special guest, Marilyn Jenkins, who spent seven years as Batgirl in the All-American Girls Professional Baseball League and graduated to become a full-fledged catcher for the Grand Rapids Chicks during the league's last three years. After the league, she went to college and worked in healthcare as a paralegal and in sales. Today, she shares some of her wisdom and highlights from her time with the league. Hi, Marilyn. Welcome to Savvy Business Radio. How are you today? I'm doing fine. Thank you. You betcha. We're so blessed to have you here today. You're here to share uh, history. You are part of a 12-year run, an All-American Girls Professional Baseball League that gave 600, uh, an opportunity to 600 women to play professional baseball, and you were part of that wonderful history. Share with our audience a little bit about your background. How, what brought you to baseball? My father, actually, he was a real baseball fan, and he introduced me to it as a as a young girl and took me to games and taught me the game. And how did it come about that you worked with the uh, AAGPBL? How did that work out for you? Well, the, the league mm-hmm. came to Grand Rapids in 1945, and mm-hmm. Dad told me about it and uh, suggested that I go over to the field, which was fairly close to my home here in Grand Rapids, Mm-hmm. and see if I could get a job as, as a Batgirl, which I did and which I became. I was Batgirl from um, 1945 until 1951, and in 52, I began to play on the, in the league. Wow. And for people who are not familiar with the game and baseball, what is, what is a Batgirl or a Bat person? What do they do? Well, they... After the the hitter hits, they go out and pick up the bats, bring mm-hmm. them back to the dugout, or they shine shoes or run errands, and a lot of a lot of little things that come up spontaneously. Wow! And was there a lot of prejudice with girls being part of the league? Were men like, "Hey, this shouldn't be"? How did it? How did that work out? No, I think the men liked it because we were wearing <laughs> short skirts. <laughs> They're like, "Yes." And back- Back in that day, women didn't even wear shorts. Oh wow! Out in public, so you got to consider that. As, I think the uniforms were a big part of the success of the league. Who taught you how to play baseball? Was it? Did you learn prior to getting there, or did you get professional help once you joined the league? No, I think just being a bat girl mm-hmm. for the number of years I was, I learned a lot about the game that that we were playing then, and that set me on my way. Mm-hmm. I'd get involved in uh, batting practice and things like that. Yeah. Of all the sports, do you enjoy other sports or is this your favorite sport? Well, obviously baseball is my favorite sport. <laughs> I also played a lot of golf in my life. Hmm. And um, I, in fact, I still am playing some golf. And I enjoy that too. But baseball is my favorite sport. But I like all sports. I like football too, particularly hmm. college football. Wow. And I don't know if this is true because I've played very little baseball as a very small child. And so I'm not sure if I, I know, I don't know it very well, but I've heard from my husband that it is really a, a mental game that you, it's really not just like some of the other sports where you just, you know, kick the ball around, whatever. It really requires, it's a mental like strategy in your mind and the same being with golf. Is that correct? That's very, that's very true. And that's what I try to explain to people. Baseball is a complex game. And it's a thinking man's game. It's just not one you go out and kick a ball or shoot a basket. It, 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 it's a complex game. Mm-hmm. And do you think baseball is a good game for helping children learn strategy? What do you think is the best part of baseball that kids can get out of it? Well, I think one of the first things that they can get out of it is that they're part of a team. And mm-hmm. they learn about teamwork. In all sports, most sports anyway, there are teams involved. I, I think kids getting along with with their peers mm-hmm. that state is, is an excellent way to start life. Yeah, I couldn't agree more, Marilyn. Another thing I get, and there's a lot of bashing with sports these days, and that is competition. Ooh, competition's bad. But I I rather think differently, that competition builds strength and character that, hey, without something to compete to, you don't build yourself, your skill, become a better person, a better ball player. What's your take? 
I, I take just as you take on that. Competition is <laughs> a great thing. It, it teaches us so much. And one of the things it does is it teaches us to win and to lose. Mm -hmm. That's all part of life. That's right. Because I think if you come out the idea, and I, I got this towards the end of high school, they started giving out prizes and uh, medals to people who just showed up. Oh, you showed up, so we'll give you a little prize. I'm like, but they didn't win. And, and then you go into life thinking, well, I should always be able to get something even if I didn't earn it. And, and that creates a dangerous situation later on in life. That's true. That's true, too. Very true. Mm -hmm. We don't want to get, get kids in the position of thinking that somebody owes them something just uh -huh. because they're there <laughs> or they're part, part of whatever it is. Yeah, absolutely. But this is celebrating 75 years of this wonderful league um, pioneering uh, for other athletes and women athletes to get into sports and be part of that. So you guys are the pioneers for bringing this forth. Uh, what is the biggest takeaway you got by participating in the league? Oh, I learned so much from it. I, I learned how to get, get along with other people. As I said before, I learned to win and lose. Mm -hmm. uh, I learned to travel. I, I, I was 17 when the league, when I started playing, and I had obviously a lot to learn, although I didn't think I did. <laughs> um, and it, it was, it brought confidence to me. Mm -hmm. Self-esteem, it had an effect on all that. Wow. How was it received by your family? Were they, was your mom or dad or family trying to say, hey, it's not a good idea for a woman to do this? Or how did oh, they no, take to my, it? They were, they were excited about it. Oh, cool. Although, my dad died before I played, but uh, he was excited that I was Batgirl, and he used to come to the games to see me, and Aww. he was really promoting and Mom kind of went along with it all. <laughs> and what happened for you after you left the league and stopped playing professionally? Where did you go on from there? Well, I became an x-ray technologist, mm -hmm. so I went to school for that, and then I kept on going to college. And I ended up working as a paralegal. So I had an English degree. Mm -hmm. And then after that, I um, ran an estate sale business here in Grand Rapids for about 35 years. Ah, oh, wow. You've had quite an extensive career. I've had, a lot, I've had an interesting life. Absolutely. That's what I'll say. <laughs> but when you say the league 75 years, yeah. that's my, almost my whole lifetime. Wow. I know. Wow. Time goes amazingly fast. I, I'm about to hit, enter into my 50s. And yeah, I feel like yesterday was 20. It's amazing. Yep, right. That's the way it goes fast. <laughs> what, what would you leave uh, here when we end our interview together would be your greatest advice for any young people, the, the millennials or the new ones entering the job force and, and not too long of a time, they will be a big part of the job force. What would be your greatest advice for the young people entering the job market? I firmly believe that today college is almost a mandatory thing. Mm -hmm. Although you can get jobs, but if you if you're so motivated that you want to do something with your life, you better get to college if it's possible for you. Absolutely. Well, Marilyn, it's been fabulous having you share your great wisdom today on Savvy. And I know our listeners are, are going to get a lot out of what you had to share today. Thank you so much for coming to Savvy Business Radio. Well, thank you for allowing me. You betcha. Savvy Business Radio broadcasts worldwide via a large podcast network celebrating business owners, entrepreneurs, influencers, and successful individuals. Find out about our paid sponsorship opportunities or how to become a guest. Call 732-474-7375 or email Christina at SavvyBusinessRadio.com.